Good morning, MHS. It's Wednesday, and welcome to the December 14th edition of The Pulse. I'm Cameron Wozolowski. And I'm Jenna Kelly. Thank you so much for joining us. This week on The Pulse, we will feature a Manchester sports legend that is busy all year round. As the winter season approaches, cold weather often means a change in wardrobe, but we investigate why students donned PJs for class on Friday. Finally, we will take you to Wickham Park, a winter wonderland, to explore one of Manchester's unique holiday traditions. All this and much more coming up on this week's edition of The, the Pulse. Pulse. From taping ankles to rehabilitating pulled muscles, Mary Cartarelli labors day in and day out to keep Manchester athletes performing in peak condition. Pat Doherty journeys to her newly renovated office to explore what makes Mrs. Cartarelli such a valuable member of MHS Athletics. Many different pieces of the puzzle are needed to complete a successful athletic program. Athletes, coaches, and athletic directors are necessary. But all of these pieces rely on one person, and that is Miss Cartarelli. Athletes of all sports go to Miss Cartarelli for help. Impact testing, ankle taping, and concussion protocol are all her specialties. I always check in with the school nurse every day, so we check in to see if any of the athletes have stopped in uh, throughout the day, and then this way, if they haven't, if there's any issues going on, I can check in with the coaches. Miss Cartarelli loves her job. She's in her office on a day-to-day -day basis, helping athletes achieve greatness. It doesn't seem like a job, um, even though the amount of work is a lot, but it, does, it seldom seems like a job, so I go in, I, you know, I just love it. And student athletes feel the same about her. Many say that they feel very comfortable to know that she's on the sideline. Well, I appreciate Ms. Carter really because just knowing that she's there is like, when I'm on the field, it's a really reassuring feeling. and. You know, just to know that she's always there before or after games if you need her. Right here in Miss Cartarelli's office, she helps student athletes on a daily basis with any athletic concerns they may have. From The Pulse, this has been Patrick Doherty reporting. We would like to give a special thanks to Mrs. Cartarelli for her endless dedication to our athletic programs and individual athletes. And I know for me personally, she's been a key role in my four years in MHS athletics. Yes, definitely. She's helped me with all my injuries. And speaking of athletics, the Manchester High School boys basketball team had a turnaround season last year, going from 3-17 in 2015 to 9-11 last year. Now in his second year as head coach, John Reiser hopes the team can continue to add more games to the win column. The Manchester High School's boys basketball team is gearing up for this season with tryouts taking place last weekend. And at the helm is someone who's familiar with the game of basketball. John Reiser has been coaching at MHS for 16 years, two of those being with our very own varsity boys basketball team. The team is returning four out of five of their starters from last year and have some new additions with great potential, something that Coach Reiser believes is good building blocks to a successful season. So we've got a good returning group, and we've got Jevin out at the moment. So as far as the depth goes, there's a lot of new people there. I think they're good players, but the stuff we run isn't easy. It takes a while to pick it up, defensively and offensively. They have been working on many things, including free throws, agility, jump shots, cardio, and defense. Even though they have made much progress in only one season under his leadership, Coach Reiser believes there is still more work to be done. And, you know, uh, Getting nine wins, and it looks like, oh, you triple the amount of wins, and, and that was probably, but we got to build on that, you know. Um, so we've got to take it to the, you know, that next step, and then really be able to compete at a state level. But one thing has not changed, the high expectations the players set for each other. I expect for the new transfers to play a big role, and our seniors to be leaders on the team. The team's overall goal, making it to the state tournament game at Mohegan Sun. From the Pulse, this has been Lucas Bolduck reporting. The guys have really been working hard right out of the gate and are looking to make a mark early on in their scrimmages later in the week. They are hoping that all of this hard work leads to a successful run in this year's state tournament. 
On December 9th, students in schools throughout Manchester and the entire state of Connecticut dressed comfy for a cause. Ben Mashinsky brings us the story of one very special boy that started one very impactful movement. Nicholas Wesolowski doesn't remember much of it, but he remembers enough. At the time, it seemed there was nothing he could do. After all, who would expect such a young kid to do something so impactful? But Nicholas Wesolowski was going to stop at nothing to help his little sister. Make sure no one had to go through the same experience that we did have, which is um, seeing her going through cancer. Nick, now 12, was three years old when he found out that his three-month-old sister, Charlotte, was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer. It really changed um, a lot in our family. It changed kind of how we looked at everything and you realize how precious um, life is. And it made us want to do something to help other people who need to have the same mix, who have to go through the same thing. The next couple years were very hard on the family and young Nick remembers just how tough it was. It was hard and like, we wanted to, I wanted to help other people like her. But he had an idea. The kids at CCMC, while getting treatment, have to wear their pajamas for long periods of time. And um, I wanted to like ha have something fun that like also honored them. Six years ago, Nick organized the first PJ Day at Coventry Grammar School. He challenged other students to wear pajamas because he wanted them to experience what cancer patients, like his sister, went through during treatment. It's so important because it gives back to all those kids at CCMC who have cancer and are currently fighting right now. In the first year, they raised $500 for the Connecticut Children's Medical Center. And then from there, it's just spilled out of town. Last year, um, we went from raising $500 to last year was the fifth year, we raised $63,500. In addition to the 103 schools, 53 Dunkin' Donuts, uh, all the Highland Markets in the states, uh, in the state, and then um, five of the Manchester area restaurants, countless businesses, daycares, and others. Have donated to the movement. But Nick's mother, Tara Wesolowski, thinks the support of the community is what made the difference. And um, the support of his teachers and the parents on the PTO, all of our neighbors and everybody, the way they've rallied behind him. As Pajama Day has expanded across the state, it has brought the family closer together. We want to help people like they help my sister. It's not about the money. Rather, it's about giving hope to every child going through cancer. To see a lot of these kids that are able to embrace what our kids went through every day, not being able to leave the hospital, being in their pajamas for days and weeks at a time, I think it's a very positive experience and kind of brings it a little bit more to home. Um, just to know that kids are helping like kids that were like me. The family also hosted a movie night for CCMC cancer patients in Coventry High School's auditorium. There were many snacks, raffles and activities for patients and their families. We always need help and need that encouragement from people in our community. One family's small idea, with a little help from the community, has grown into a statewide event and proves that no idea is ever too small. Charlotte is now eight and cancer-free, but PJ Day is bigger than ever. How does this all make Charlotte feel? Really happy because um, it shows that they care about the kids at CCMC. From The Pulse, this is Ben Mashinsky reporting. At seven years old, Nicholas Wesolowski has made an impact on the entire state of Connecticut when he founded Pajama Day and was honored with a legislative citation by Representative Tim Acker just this past year. Donations to the Pajama Day Fund can be made at ConnecticutChildrensFoundation.org slash give. Manchester recently held a unique event at the Town Hall that allowed many people to learn more about their family's history. Matt Barnwell digs to the roots of these family trees. While most people view town hall as strictly a place of business, on December 3rd, they had a little fun. The Genealogy Roadshow, an event that allows members of the community to discover more about their family history, was held in town hall. This semi-annual event always draws significant interest from the community, as people are eager to learn just how interesting their ancestors were. Uh, the kind of talents and perhaps things you like to do, perhaps some of them you're not even aware of it, but were inspired by relatives you might have had several centuries ago. A variety of different people attend the Genealogy Roadshow, from curious citizens to professional genealogists to members of a unique organization called the Daughters of the American Revolution. The DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution, is a women's yeah. service organization. We are a group of women who are descended from patriots who contributed to the cause during the American Revolution. 
and our focuses are on education and patriotism. The women of the DAR wear elaborate sashes decorated with pins and buttons in order to display their ancestral link to Revolutionary War soldiers, and their passion for genealogy is what allows the organization to thrive. The attendees of the Genealogy Roadshow are able to learn extensively about their local family history due to the records that are kept in the Town Hall Vault. These documents account for the births, marriages, and deaths of millions of Manchester residents and date all the way back to the early 1800s. The Genealogy Roadshow truly is a unique learning experience, and it is right here at the Town Hall Vault where Manchester's family history is stored. From The Pulse, this has been Matt Barno reporting. The Genealogy Roadshow is held twice a year and is a great way for people to learn more about where they came from. For more information on their next event and how to get involved, visit townofmanchester.org. The holiday season is here and Wickham Park has welcomed all of the young children who are looking to get into the holiday spirit. Chris Pagano gives us an inside look on this festive tradition. For the past 33 years, Wickham Park has sponsored a free holiday themed event. Santa's workshop. When they come here, it's so special. It's so magical. Within these cabin doors is an opportunity for children to enjoy a memorable Christmas experience. Let's take a look at what's inside. They first walk in and speak to the head elf. All right, Kila, have you been nice or naughty this year? Ask them what they want for Christmas. After making their wish list, the kids' next stop is seeing Santa. Witnessing the man of the North Pole often erases all doubts. And they asked me, are you real? And I said, certainly, you're sitting here with me. And, and they, they have a point of contact with not just a quote unquote fairy tale, but a person that they can talk to. At the next station, kids receive painted blocks made by the other elf workers. The appreciation expressed is what stands out to Santa's help. Even just like simple things like a painted wooden block, Go, make some go crazy. They're like, wow, thank you so much. I love this. They like picking out which ones they want. Um, and it's just a wood block. <laughs> With so many different eye-catching attractions, it's difficult to see everything that Santa's workshop has to offer. But the smell of tasty treats draws everyone to this last stop. I make the kids smile. I give them homemade cookies. I'm up baking all night long. And my, my cookies are wonderful and the cocoa is just so nice and warm. Right here at Wickham Park, the members of Santa's Workshop have done a great job in welcoming anyone looking to embrace their holiday spirit. From The Pulse, this has been Chris Fagano reporting. Santa's Workshop began on December 10th at Wickham Park and will be reopening their doors from this Wednesday, the 14th to the 23rd of this month. Continuing with other holiday festivities, our very own Kyle Smith investigates the different holidays and traditions that the Manchester community celebrates. When people think of the winter holiday season, they generally think about the evergreen trees and the red and green lights. However, many students celebrate a wide variety of holidays. I went around MHS to find and learn about what they celebrate and what it means to them. I celebrate Christmas and my birthday, which is in January. I celebrate Christmas and Three Kings Day. Christmas and Chinese New Year. Celebrate Hanukkah. Christmas and New Year's. We celebrate Eid, but we follow a lunar calendar, so it really depends if it falls within the winter. So if it does fall in the winter, then yeah, we'll, we'll celebrate it then. We wake up every morning and there's gifts by our bed and we open them. And then we all wake up and we go to this celebration in Hartford. Every night for the eight days, we light candles and we each like our whole family gives each other presents. With Christmas, we're all together and we get to buy presents for each other and just spend time with each other. So for Christmas, usually at our church, we go and we like show a play of like the birth of Jesus and like they teach us like what it means. While different holidays celebrate different traditions, one common thread is found in each. Seeing family from far away, like down in Tennessee, it means celebrating with my family and like being together. It really depends if I'm with family who's actually Chinese or celebrates Chinese New Year. Um, and we kind of just like hang out and it's still something to just be like with family. See like friends and families that you like haven't seen in a while. It's something that not a lot of people do. Festival of Lights and it's got a lot of like hope in its history. It's more of something to just come together with my family. New Year's is like the start of a new year, so it's like, like a new beginning almost. 
The sheer number of different winter celebrations truly showcases the diversity of the MHS community, and that diversity is what makes us Manchester High School. No matter what you celebrate, we at The Pulse wish you a happy holiday season. Well, that's all we have for you this week, Manchester. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have any suggestions for stories that we might have missed, email Mr. Larson at b11elars at mpspride.org or visit us in the communications suite. If you're interested in learning more about The Pulse, checking out our crew, or viewing some of our other projects, visit mhstelevision.com. Hey, if you just can't get enough MHS news, check out our school newspaper at mhsharbinger.org. And don't forget to like our Facebook and Twitter page at MHS Red Prod. I'm Jenna Kelly. And I'm Cameron Wazilowski. This has been The, the Pulse. Pulse.